Hi everyone, this is Vanas, your friend and tutor. And guys, today is probably the last video in this series on bending of beams. So this is the fourth example and the final example that I'm going to be taking up. Let's read the problem and let's see what it has in store. So we've got a member having a rectangular cross section. You can see 60 by 30 and it has been designed precisely to resist a moment of 40 Newton meter. You can see this. Okay, just just focus on this particular illustration right now and then we'll come to this okay there is sort of a comparison in this problem which you have to make right there is a judgment that we have to give after working out a bit of mathematical analysis now in order to increase the strength and rigidity it is proposed that two ribs two ribs okay there are two ribs which have been added at the bottom of this rectangular section two ribs be added at its bottom fine Determine the maximum normal stress for both the cases. Question is very interesting. And it is really asking you something. This is not about determining a particular value and then that's the answer. No, no, no. There is a certain sense of common sense that you need to apply after finding out the maximum value of the induced bending stress. Okay, this is going to be very fascinating. Just listen to this very carefully. So there are going to be two cases. One without trips and I'm going to be doing the entire mathematical analysis over here and then what we'll do we'll add two ribs right at the bottom okay the width of those ribs are 10 millimeter 10 millimeter and the thickness or depth let's say is going to be 5 millimeters so automatically you sort of get a sense that uh, okay some more material has been added to the beam so in that case uh, obviously the beam here the maximum normal stress would reduce that is the sort of feel that you are going to get once again no ribs and here we have added the ribs so in both the cases the applied moment is 40 newton meter that's for sure but for this particular case you sort of get a feel as if so we have added some material to this beam isn't it then in that case the maximum normal stress induced in this case would be less than this one but that's not true and i'm going to prove it to you with some very good mathematics and something the formulas which we've learned um, in in lecture number one of bending of beams that is sigma max is equal to m c over i well that is going to come to our rescue let me show you why okay so what we need what we need is the we need to determine the maximum normal stress for both the cases and we sort of need to make a judgment where the maximum normal stress would happen or would take place whether in case one or case two let's check it for ourselves here we go sigma max sigma max is equal to we know very well this is going to be m that is the bending moment applied c that is the distance of farthest fiber from the neutral axis and this i is nothing but the moment of inertia area moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis now let us plug in the values so what about m we know very well that m is 40 newton meter so let me convert that meter into millimeter so this is going to become 40 newton meter 1 meter is 10 raised to 3 millimeter. So we've got the conversion that is 40 to 10 raised to 3, 40,000 Newton millimeter. Okay. I would like to find the value of sigma max in terms of Newton per millimeter square and not Newton per meter square because that way less conversion has to happen. Okay. Immediately I'll be calculating the value of i in mm power 4. This I'll plug it in in millimeters. And what is the value of c? Just take a look at this cross section. Okay, let, let me just make a 2D figure. That would be better. So this right over here is 60, that is 30. Brilliant, the neutral axis will be somewhere here. It is a symmetrical case. That is the centroidal axis. And you know very well, in case of bending of beams, the centroidal axis is by default, by default your neutral axis. So that is the neutral axis. N, A. The farthest fiber is, uh, you can say 15 mm. Above the neutral axis, you can also say it is 15 mm below the neutral axis. It is your choice, right? At both these spots, here also, here also, you are going to get the maximum value of stress. The only difference being one is going to be compressive, one is going to be tensile. Don't worry about that. Just take a look at this. It would try to bend the beam in this fashion, in this fashion. What is this? What is this? A clear cut case of sagging. In that case, what happens? The upper fibers are undergoing compression. So this is basically a region of compression. So let me write this as comp. Let me write this as tension. Once again, the beam would bend like this, isn't it? The beam would bend like this. 
that is going to be your neutral plane or the longitudinal axis all the fibers in this region will be undergoing compression and the fiber right here will be undergoing maximum compression and the fiber over here will be undergoing maximum tension and this is the region of tension of the fibers you can say that okay so the farthest fiber distance of the farthest fiber from the neutral axis is 15 either above or below in compression or tension not to worry about that so this is going to be 15 let us just plug in the values divided by ina neutral axis now this can be worked out very easily and uh, just rub this what about ina that's gonna be bd cube over 12 so that's b that's b 60 fine multiplied by d cube that is 30 cube divided by 12 you just need to plug in all of these values into a calculator and we are going to get a unique value of sigma max and let me tell you sigma max will work out as here we go i've already done the calculation here it is everything is already done and this is going to precisely work out as uh, 4.44 newton per mm square let me just write this 4.44 newton per mm square and by now you should know this if you have seen my previous lecture that one newton per mm square is actually equivalent to one mega pascal so going by that logic you can see that the maximum stress induced right we want to know the magnitude of the maximum stress okay that is going to be equal to 4.44 mpa and that is beautiful and this case which we have already done is without rips beautiful now let us focus on that with rips case with rips okay a bit of calculation you need to go through just a second let me rub all of this So in case number one, it was very easy to locate the neutral axis. It was right at the center at a distance of 15, either from the top or from the bottom. It was very easy to work out. But here, you need to put in a lot of effort to find the first of all position of the neutral axis and then go ahead and find the moment of inertia with respect to that neutral axis. And that's a bit calculation intensive. Let me show you what needs to be done. Okay. So we again need to find the value of maximum stress and we will sort of analyze what happens okay yeah. so in this bottom portion ribs have been added 10 by 5 10 by 5 cross section ribs have been added throughout the length right so on adding the ribs what happens to the area moment of inertia what happens to the value of c these are going to change right so initially this was at a distance of 15 from the top and now it will be at a distance of more than 15 you can realize this some material has been added so literally axis which previously was here will shift slightly below how much is the shift that is something which we will work out and we can do that very easily so let me just show you uh, very roughly roughly let me make this and ultimately ultimately first of all let me just write the formula this is something sigma max you know what is the maximum bending moment not the maximum bending moment but the applied moment that is 40 newton meter mc over i neutral axis so in order to plug in all the values this is something that you already know what about this not known what about this i n a that's also not known to us we can work it out very easily here we go let me show that to you and here is the cross section beautiful dot dot and a dot yet again yet again yet again and there you go that's the figure that's the figure that is 10 10 10 that's 10 that's 10 that's 10 and that's 5 5 5 5 let us do the division of all that is 1 let's call this as 2 let's call this as 3 so there are essentially 3 rectangles i need to consider the origin somewhere <laughs> where i where am i going to consider the origin let's say that the origin is right here this is let's say the y axis this let's say is the x axis 
okay so anything above is positive anything below is negative and in this case you know very well just a sec guys this is 30 millimeters right so initially it was a simple rectangle the neutral axis was right here at a distance of 15 from the top 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 line you can say but now it will be shifted slightly below I mean the value will be slightly more than 15 if you consider the reference line as the top line over here let's see that okay what we want is y bar for y bar you've got this formula you've got this a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 over summation of all the areas and that is brilliant a1 plus a2 plus a3 how to get those values just take a look a1 is going to be equal to this that is 60 you know this 10 10 10 10 10 10 60 60 multiplied by this 30 63 is 18 18 100 millimeter raised to 4 done what about a2 so a2 and a3 both of them are identical and you can see 10 into 5 10 into 5 that is going to be 50 mm square done so area calculation is over now let's let's talk about y1 so y1 will be somewhere here okay somewhere here at a distance of 15 we are talking about this rectangle only that is rectangle number one its center is right here that is let's say c1 so it's going to be equal to 15 mm fair enough what about y2 y2 is going to be equal to how much just take a look at this i'm going to make this portion again okay a slightly bigger figure you know this one so so the origin is right here that's x that's y and that's rectangle one and that is its center how much is this depth that is five so this is going to be 2.5 isn't it so so this is nothing but your y2 and similarly you have another y2 over here not y2 but this is going to be y3 which is again going to work out as 2.5 but since both of these values are below therefore they have to be taken in the negative sense i mean according to the reference point that i have taken okay if you choose this origin over here then y1 y2 y3 all of them will be negative if you choose the reference point somewhere here in that case y1 y2 y3 all of them are going to be positive so ultimately the idea is whichever reference point you take based on that well the magnitudes might be same but uh, the signs might be different okay here we go and y2 obviously is going to be equal to minus 2.5 and that also by default is your y3 and when you plug in all these values okay let me just check how much this works out as when you if you try to plug in all these values the final value of y bar which you guys are going to get is this 14.08 millimeters amazing okay and let me have a different color so the neutral axis is at a distance of 14.08 from here so it, if it is 14.08 from here that means from the top it is going to be 30 minus 14.08 listen to this once again the origin is right here y bar has worked out as 14.08 positive obviously that means the neutral axis is above okay the centroidal axis is above and which by default is your neutral axis remember this always at a distance of 14.08 from this reference line that is the reference line x axis 14.08 above so how much below it is going to be 19.08 below anyway don't don't worry about that let me rub this initially okay and uh, this is 14.08 so this is at a height of 15 this is c1 so final neutral axis is right here i'm trying to make this and that's this by the way is your y bar which by the way is 14.08 millimeters done right that's done now okay so time to get this value just take a look c let me erase this question mark this is not a question mark anymore we know what c is and like i'll show it to you for this fiber this fiber if you talk about this fiber it lies at a distance of let me see this fiber right here is at a distance of how much this is this by the way this is 30 and this much is 14.08 so this is going to be 30 minus 14.08 where the hell is the calculator 30 minus 14.08 and this is going to work out as 
15.92 okay so that's 15.92 okay okay fine but if, if you watch this fiber over here is the farthest why let us try to get the value oh ho, ho. no it's okay this is the farthest why because this much portion is 14.08 and when you add 5 to that 14.08 plus 5 is going to be 19.08 so here we go c is 19.08 millimeters so the farthest fiber or the distance of the farthest fiber from this neutral axis by the way this is the neutral axis this red color line that you see is your neutral axis because that was the centroidal axis that's the reason so c is going to be 19.08 so now we know the value of C also. The only thing left is to calculate the value of the area moment of inertia with respect to this neutral axis and that can be done very easily. Let me show you. Here we go. So that's Y bar. Okay. I and A. So there are basically three rectangles. For all the rectangles you need to calculate their moment of inertia with neutral axis okay for rectangle one i with respect to neutral axis for rectangle two and i with respect to neutral axis for rectangle three done so individually we will be calculating ina1 ina2 ina3 and then we will be summing all of them so here we go i n a one okay let's apply the parallel axis theorem here we go let me just show you in very short this is the rectangle that I am talking about, right? The main centroid is somewhere here. This is at a distance of y bar is equal to 19.08. The centroid of this rectangle itself, this rectangle is what? 60 by 30. The centroid of this rectangle is 60 by 30. This is at a distance of 15. So this is nothing but BD cube by 12. So that's B. And that's this entirely is what you know this this is d so bd cube by 12 okay just listen to this this is bd cube by 12 plus area of the rectangle multiplied by the y and square what is y y is nothing but the distance between axes so what we've basically done is that we want we want this is the neutral axis and n a this is the neutral axis once again this is the neutral axis okay which lies at a distance of 90 this is not 19.08 this was something else let me just check that is 14.08 okay that is 14.08 14.08 that was the neutral axis uh, this 4 is looking like 9 that looks better okay so once again here is the neutral axis at a height of 14 from this baseline and here is the centroidal axis of this rectangle that is 15 and you can see the distance between both the axes is 15 minus 14.08 and that is quite obvious so here we go let us plug in all the values this here is 60 60 multiplied by this is 30 cube divided by 12 bd cube by 12 plus area area of rectangle 1 obviously and that's 1800 multiplied by this is going to be 15 minus 14.08 okay so i'm going to be rubbing this 15 minus 14.08 here we go 15 minus 14.08 and the square that's it once again let me show you that was the rectangle the neutral axis was somewhere here the centroidal axis was somewhere here and this was at a distance of 14.08 the centroidal axis was at a distance of 15 so the distance between both the axis and its square is this okay so you were supposed to find the moment of inertia with respect to neutral axis how to find that just pass an axis pass an axis to this centroid okay and then you need to do this distance between the axis and its square if you've seen my videos on moment of inertia calculation even this would be very easy for you anyway anyway let's proceed so that was all about calculating the area moment of inertia of rectangle number one now let us talk about second rectangle and for second rectangle the analysis is going to be something like this saying na2 is going to be equal to here we go you see this just 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 a wait just wait a while here here 
and same stuff is here okay just take a look just take a look the neutral axis is somewhere here okay so this is the distance of the neutral axis that is 14.08 and this is the distance of the centroid of this very small rectangle isn't it how much 2.5 so the distance between the two axes is now going to be 14.08 plus 2.5. How much is this? Uh, well, whatever. Not to worry. First of all, BD cube by 12. How much is B? That's 10. D cube, 5. BD cube divided by 12. Plus area, area 2. What's area 2? That's 50. Multiplied by distance between the two axes. That is quite clear. 14.08 plus 2.5. 14.08 plus 2.5 yeah and e square always remember this we were supposed to find the moment of this rectangle moment of inertia of this rectangle only okay this rectangle with respect to this axis neutral axis so what we'll do we'll locate the centroid of this rectangle and we'll we'll pass an axis parallel to this neutral axis and then we are going to apply the parallel axis theorem okay parallel axis theorem states that it is equal to the summation of two things two terms the first term is the moment of inertia with respect to its own centroidal axis parallel to neutral axis this is its own centroidal axis parallel to neutral axis that is b d cube by 12 plus area of this rectangle one that is this then multiplied by the distance between the two axes this is the vertical distance in this case how much 14.08 plus 2.5 very easy isn't it and similarly the same analysis for will will be for i n a 3 also it's identical so i won't be doing any calculations let me just make a very quick check yeah you're going in the right direction here we go so do note all these things down guys here we go <clears throat> what is the value of ina1 first of all let's let's make a very quick check ina1 will be equal to 13 136523 dot dot 52 m m raised to 4 and then secondly this is going to work out as i n a 2 i n a 2 will work out as 13848.98 okay 13848.98 m m raised to 4 and that is also equal to moment of inertia of rectangle 3 with respect to the neutral axis and that's done when when you plug in all these values over here over here what you are going to get is the moment of inertia of this entire figure with respect to this neutral axis and that is going to be equal to I have already done the calculation let me see 16422 1 1.5 1642121.5 m m raised to power 4 you just need to plug in all the values let me show that maximum normal stress pending stress is going to be equal to so this is the location of maximum stress this is the location of max normal stress isn't it okay at a distance of 19.08 from the neutral axis so that is going to be by default your value of c okay so m m again we are going to put the value of m this 40 newton meter in newton millimeter so this is going to become 40,000 newton millimeter here we go 40,000 m into c what is the value of c c is 19.08 everything in newton and millimeter 19.08 and all of this divided by where 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 divided by ina ina is 16422.1.5 16422.1.5 when you plug in all the values the value of maximum stress let me tell you that you are going to get is 4.64 newton per mm square 4.64 newton per mm square see this very strange sigma max is 1 newton per mm square is 1 mpa 4.64 mega pascals <laughs> and you can clearly see and this is with the ribs this has been obtained with ribs when you when you attach the ribs at the bottom and you can clearly see if you don't have any ribs if it's a simple rectangle then the maximum normal stress induced would be 4.44 but if you attach the ribs to the bottom if you attach the ribs what happens the normal stress instead of reducing 
rather it increases clearly see 4.4 and that has been increased by a by a difference of 0.2 let's say okay so there is a very famous proverb in english i don't know whether you have heard this or not it says all that glitters is not gold listen to this once again all that glitters all that glitters is not gold what it is trying to convey is that anything which appears initially as good and valuable does not mean that it truly is so this is on attaching the ribs it appears to us as if okay we have attached ribs we have attached more material to this beam that means that now the maximum normal stress would be less than the previous case but instead of getting a lesser value we rather got a larger value slightly larger but it is larger value and that's why all that glitters is not gold so guys this was the last video in the series of videos on bending of beams i'm going to kick off with a new topic a new chapter in mechanics of solids and you guys will see that very soon so that was all for today i'm going to see you again in the next video until then take care have a nice day keep learning keep watching and thank you